Let's do this one again. I obviously have plenty of time on my hands right now. I don't, don't, don't have a lot of time. Who am I kidding? This isn't getting <laughs> repainted. There, it's a PS5 controller. Welcome back. It's good to be here. I know it's been a few weeks, but I am back, ready to go. If this is your first time here, please throw a like, throw a subscribe. You know, if I get another comment saying, dude, you only have 200 subscribers, what the... Like, I love, I love those, honestly. I, those are really cool because uh, it makes me feel good. But, you know, share, share my channel. Follow me on Instagram, send me a message, leave a comment, tell someone, Tell someone that that you know say hey you want to get on something uh on the ground floor it's not a multi-level marketing thing at all so arguably my absolute favorite topic to discuss is video game accessories probably more than video games themselves and arguably more than hardware maybe I love the way that companies come up with new and exciting ways of bringing games to life and interacting with our favorite pastime. Go home, Mad Cats, I'm not talking to you. And controllers are the ultimate video game accessory. They are the primary communication device. They are the tool that we use to communicate our actions and intentions onto the screen. Controllers have gone through a wild ride with crazy designs, budget, premium options, uh, motion sensing, and all sorts of other alternate input approaches. Now this video isn't about the best or worst controllers or anything like that. Maybe in the future I'll do something more like that because I something I could see myself doing. It's how to take your plain Jane ordinary controller, this is a knockoff Switch Pro controller for example, and turn it into something unique and something that you really love. If you're a tinker like me, then you love to take things apart, whether to improve or hack or just put it back together to see how they work. If you're also like me, then you don't like to spend a lot of money on things unnecessarily. Case in point, I rarely get more than one of something unless it's absolutely necessary. Like I'm not a collector, I'm not a gaming purist or anything like that. I am casual, I enjoy talking about it, but I'm not someone that's gonna have 10 Xbox Elite controllers on a shelf behind me. I have an old CRT TV and like six Wii games. So I actually, I actually got interested in the Nintendo Switch post-release and it took until 2019 for me to actually buy one and I bought the Switch Lite because I wanted to save $100. That's just who I am. Full transparency, I do have a regular Switch that I bought right after, but that's besides the point. Now with all this buying, I decided to pick up a couple of the super cheap knockoff Switch Pro controllers on Amazon, which I don't even think they you can find them there anymore because Nintendo probably cracked down on them. If you can, I'll link them below. They are okay. I, I did watch a lot of reviews on them and they are decent. I mean, I got them to play multiplayer games with my son more than anything else. But the consensus was that they were pretty much identical to a standard Switch Pro controller, except for no branding and the HD rumble was missing and no NFC, I'm pretty sure. I, I haven't tried that. And that rumble is brutal. It is very loud and it feels like it wants to separate itself from your hands every time it goes off. So I shut it off every time, which is kind of a pain, but it's not the end of the world. So since I have no real allegiance to these, I decided I was gonna take one of them and paint it flat white. You know, I love my white Xbox One controller. It's my go-to. And I do reference how I really like white accessories. Here, here. Now this video is not sponsored, but I have worked with a brand called Plasti Dip for sponsor content. And I just wanna say that if you want to paint your controller, you want it high quality, grippy, and 100% reversible, then Plasti Dip is the way to go. 
Now this controller, and I assume regular Switch Pro controllers are the same way, was very easy to disassemble. So I started with my comically small screwdriver and started taking it apart. I started by removing the screws at the bottom of each of the feet. This allowed them to slide off. Once that was done, I just located the four to six screws attaching each of the other layers and removed them. The faceplate was probably the hardest part because I had to detach it from the main board of the controller, which caused the, all the pads and buttons to fly everywhere. Luckily, each piece has a unique shape or cutout so that it only fits back into the position it belongs. I laid out the four parts and started spraying. The front and back plates were the easiest because I only needed one side coated. The legs are fully three dimensional so it took some trial and error between standing them up and laying them on their side and then flipping them when dry. I spread out the pieces and did three solid coats waiting about an hour in between each coat. The next morning I did an extra coat for good measure and then waited until that evening to start reassembling. I have an admission that I did forget where most of the screws went when reassembling, so it took some trial and error, but I got them all back in the right spot. And it only took three assemblies forgetting to put the battery back in before I got it right. But all in all, everything came out awesome. The uh, It is definitely the most grippy controller that I've ever used, uh, but it feels really, really high quality. The cool thing too is that there are enhancers and so you can add metallics or gloss or even like pearlescent. This is orange. That's not what I'm looking for. This is the one. This is the pearlizer, which adds a pearlescent finish, which I will probably do to that because I want to see what that looks like so that my switch controller can match my Rocket League white pearlescent car. So here, here is one thing. I screwed up this little foot because I made a mistake of grabbing it, forgetting that it was still wet. And so I have some fingerprints and I tried to kind of like cover it up. The good thing is though, I can just peel this off and do it again. Check it out. Completely reversible. I'll just do this part again. It's like rubber. Let's do this one again. My Discord's going off. Side note, if you want to join the Discord, we have awesome conversations on here daily. I have a link in the description. Excuse me. Okay, so let's wrap it up. So yeah, um, damn it. I'm in the new set. Didn't really do any tests. So I apologize if it takes a couple videos for me to reacclimate the lighting and everything. Uh, I had a lot more time to to do some test shots at the at the old the old set. Let's just catch up with life a little bit. What are you watching right now? What are you playing? What are you excited for? Do you have a new? Did you get a new next gen console? Honestly, I wasn't really super amped on next gen until the day before the Xbox was set to come out. So, have you ever? repainted a controller? Have you ever done a custom design on a controller? Have you ever used Plasti Dip for something that wasn't a controller? I want you to let me know in the comments below what your experience is. And if you haven't, what controller would you want to paint? Let me know. Cheers.